Hello and welcome to another standard video here in the new Foundations meta game. Today we're checking out a very peculiar blue-white control deck. This is a tap-out control deck, tap-out referring to the fact that we're playing very few instants, mostly playing in our own turn, control referring to the fact that we're the only ones having fun, and our win condition is Extravagant Replication, a six-mana enchantment from Foundations, saying at the beginning of your upkeep, create a token that's a copy of another target a non-land permanent you control. So it would be great to copy creatures with Enter the Battlefield abilities, of which we have two copies here of Beza that can help stabilize against aggro, making fish tokens, gaining life, occasionally drawing cards and making treasures as well. But the real card that's awesome to copy with Replication is Three Blind Mice. You might remember Three Blind Mice plus Tamio, which rotated out of standard, which aimed to use Tamio to make a copy of Three Blind Mice. And once you have a token copy, you can use Three Blind Mice itself to make additional copies of it and that will very quickly get out of hand as you'll hopefully see in the gameplay. Now instead of Tamyo we're using Replication to make copies of three blind mice which then in turn can make more and more copies of itself and then eventually we'll assemble a lethal army of 1-1 one -one mouse tokens also getting plus one plus one and vigilance. So that's our game plan. To make sure we get to that point of course we do need to control the board and in the meta game with a lot of burn decks and hasty creatures four copies of authority is pretty important so opposing creatures enter tapped and we gain one life when a creature enters. Also very good against Orobrask's Forge specifically, as the opponent's creatures will enter tapped, so we're not taking any damage from them. Then at 2 mana we've got a bit of removal, get lost, good at answering enchantments and being an instant speed answer can be important. And then we also have ossification, which can exile opposing creatures and planeswalkers. We've got plenty of basics that we can enchant to make sure it works. And it's also something we can eventually copy with the replication, so we have a removal turn after turn if we need it. And then we've got our card draw artifacts. Maze Mind Tome can pay 2 mana to draw or just tap to scry, eventually gaining 4 life. And then a treasure map can scry repeatedly, eventually flipping into treasure cove and making some treasures. So this can also be a way of ramping out our more expensive cards. And then at 3 mana besides the blind mice, we've got trapped in the screen as another versatile answer that we wouldn't mind replicating. Can answer artifacts, creatures and enchantments, so that way we can also answer artifacts which uh, ossification and get lost don't get to remove. And then we've got plenty of board wipes, Day of Judgment times 4, and then uh, two copies of Sunfall to try and keep the board nice and clear. And then our mana base has plenty of basics to enable ossification. I made the decision not to run a Fabled Passage, even though it can be a good mana fixing in a two-color deck that needs basics for ossification. I didn't want to introduce shuffle effects, because between Maze Mind Tome and Treasure Map, we do get to scry a fair bit, so then if we put a lot of useless cards on the bottom and then shuffle them back with Fabled Passage, that would be a little bit counterproductive. Also the reason why I'm not playing Field of Ruin type effects to blow up opposing non-basics. Instead, we have more scry lands and surveil lands that enter tapped. Another reason not to play too many shuffle effects. And then a fountain port can also maybe make some tokens or draw additional cards. Can also synergize with the other tokens in the deck. And then a flood farm verge will consistently make both colors. So yeah, that's our deck. Now let's jump into some games and see how the deck does. Okay, we're on the play. Our hand seems functional. Got our early scry and surveil to find more lands initially. So for card advantage, Beza to stabilize against aggro. And I'll keep planes on top. So yeah, just missing the replication to combo with our blind mice. Opponent on maybe a rabbit deck. So sweepers are going to be very good in this matchup. Want to try and find one as soon as possible. Can maybe use ossification on a slightly scarier a rabbit. Phineas is uh, potentially one of those. Gotta be a little pickier now. And uh, yeah, maybe just take my draw step. Find another Beza. So let us play Archive. See an ossification on top. I don't think I need it. I would rather find sweepers. 
one for one in this matchup is not necessarily the way to go. But I will deal with Phineas. Opponent will get a counter. And then next turn, Beza will buy some more time. And then, yeah, finding board wipes is of utmost importance. As well as the replication I probably need to keep. A recruit with Offspring. At least that one we can block with a 4-5 Beza. I think we still scry. And then Archive. I could keep on top since I can play it alongside the second Beza if the first one were to die. But it's not a sweeper. It's not a replication, but I will need additional lands to cast those. So sure. As far as lands go, getting to surveil is nice. And we get to draw with Beza, gain life, make tokens. Everything except make a treasure. Authority can also gain us a decent amount of life in this matchup. And Beza is a perfect tool to kind of force the opponent to overextend into a board wipe. Because otherwise it can hold off smaller creatures. But once they commit too much, then now our sweepers are looking great. Although the only problem is we don't have a sweeper yet. So we'll see. War leader can pump their team. Still doesn't necessarily attack past Beza. And let's keep scrying. Fountain port, one of our better lands to potentially find. I think the plan next turn is going to be probably play a land to surveil and then just draw with tomb, play authority, and hope to find a board wipe in the meantime. Start by maybe drawing. Find a land. And yeah, let's just go authority, archive. And pass. Maybe regret a little bit scrying that much with a tome instead of just drawing more cards. But uh, prioritizing a board wipe is pretty important. Another recruit with offspring at least gains us two life. And a mentor. That one's big. 7-7. Seven, seven. And it's only going to get bigger. War leader. Attacks, that's a little strange. Since now we can double block it. And another Bezos looking good. Another authority. So, opponent's got five lands. Yeah, there's no way I get anything out of Beza besides fish tokens. So, I'll start there. At 26 life, we have a bit of time to draw out of it. Sunfall would be by far the best sweeper, since that also gives us a win condition. But I'll take a Wrath. So, maybe start by taking 7, or I can trade now. And lose Beza and 2 fish tokens. Yeah, I guess I'll uh, soak up the damage here. Another archive. Trapped on the screen. That just answers the mentor. And then would trigger recruit three times. I don't think that's good enough. And do we even play three blind mice? I guess I still do. Just to get something on the board. So yeah, it's not looking great. But there's still six sweepers in the deck. Haven't seen any. And we've got a lot of extra redraws. Probably taking the hit from Mentor now. That's just a land. Fountain Port would have given us some redraws in the meantime. 
But I uh, had to bottom it earlier. And oof, War Leader, that's painful since now they can pump their creatures, attack past the 1-1s. One -ones. And uh, they got to play it with Offspring, so they get to effect twice. Everything tramples. So, yeah, it's not looking good. Soak up as much damage as we can. But I might still be close to dead. We're at one. Maze Mind Tome for the epic redraw into a sweeper, please. Both Sunfall and Day of Judgment are good to go. Oof, wow. That feels good. Although three blind mice not accruing any value. So the game goes on. Evangelist is a problem. Although at least gains me some life when entering. I can just take my draw step first. Blind mice is gone. So if we didn't play it, we would have been dead by now, so glad we at least went for the mouse tokens. And that's another land. Scry one. And authority is not good enough. Alright, so next turn I get two more draws. In the meantime, I'll be at one. So don't love my chances here. Yeah, luckily for us, Okolo Village doesn't work on bats, otherwise the plus one counter could have made the difference. Opponent runs out Quest Caller, gains two, but also pumps the bat. And now they can activate the village. Alright, so another board wipe will do nicely. Authority number four. Alright, last chance. Alright, the game goes on. Make sure to play Authority first so we gain more of the bat. Because our opponent will get another leftover 1-1. One -one. Next turn we gain four of Maze Mind Tome. There's also a lot of other tomes and uh, treasure maps left in the deck. So those are good draws. At least while our opponent's not threatening lethal. Up to it, making three tokens, and yeah, with Village, those all pick up a counter, but they also gain nine life. So, for now it's good, but next turn it's gonna sting. Trapped in the screen answers one creature. And a tome I'll keep. Yeah, I think we just deal with a 2 2. Even though there are scarier top decks. At least at 17, we bought ourselves some time. The game that keeps on giving. Alright, treasure map, and now we can start scrying. So you should be getting close to a replication or another board wipe. Either one works for me. Yeah, if this game were a movie script, you probably wouldn't believe it. Possible our opponent sandbagging some threats now. As opposed to just running them out. Can scry an upkeep, or can draw and then scry before drawing with tomb. The of judgments, I'll keep. So that's another reset button. And we've got more treasure maps to scry. Alright, so feels like we're starting to turn a corner here, but uh, can't feel too confident. 
And our opponent explodes. Awesome. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Our hands seems fine. We've got authority to slow down aggro. And then... We've got the combo, but getting to six mana is going to be the challenge. So just want to hit land drops for the rest of the game, pretty much. Opponent is on aggro and a phoenix. That's fine. No need to get lost. I'll keep get lost to answer Screaming Nemesis, which can prevent us from gaining life. Treasure map, a great way to keep hitting our land drops by scrying. So we'll take two. If our opponent's got Screaming Nemesis, their best play might be to play it and leave up a mana for a burn spell to immediately enable it. So if we can then respond with a Get Lost, we can maybe punish that play. Only need one three blind mice. And I do want to scry to make sure I find land for turn. So we'll keep that. And then just gonna keep up Get Lost, I think. Hopefully get to 5 mana for Sunfall, although with map we can transform it, make some treasures. So I could also immediately cast a Replication. It's going to be a second main Swiss Spear, of course, entering tapped. Yeah, I think I can maybe take my draw step. Or do I still scry? I guess I'll scry and then still look for land so I can play Sunfall without needing to use up all my treasures. All right. And then I still have two mana left for Get Lost in case they try to make that Screaming Nemesis play I alluded to. So yeah, that's pretty rough for the burn deck. We're still at 17. And we're about to set our engine in motion. All right, it's just going to be a Lava Runner, so no Screaming Nemesis in sight. Play Replication. Could already tap out for three Blind Mice. But keeping up Get Lost is maybe a little safer still. Can also copy Authority, which is pretty fun. Hopefully our opponent sticks around for three blind mice to actually win us the game. Monstrous Rage or Lava Runner. Sure, anything else? I'll take four. And then copy authority. And then now we can drop the mice, maybe drop first. And then we can also put our incubator token to use. So yeah, it's going to be pretty challenging for the burn deck to get us from this position. Right, double lightning strike puts us to eight. And now we can just animate incubator block and then if they have another pump spell we can get lost they're gonna lightning helix it so they would still trample for three i think it's probably time to take out a lava runner and now i'm not too worried about a screaming nemesis bolt wave puts us to five so yeah they're definitely making an effort. Just gotta hope they draw creatures as opposed to burn spells, and yeah, her opponent scoops it up. Awesome, on to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Good tools against various aggro decks. And then we're just waiting for the replication to combine with three blind mice. 
opponent with a turn one swarm duress. Not what we love to see. I don't think authority is super important in this matchup. They'll probably take ossification. Unless they have a second discard spell, then they might take authority first and then ossification. We're hoping to find some of our two mana artifacts in this matchup. And they did actually take authority. Yeah, treasure map will do. And a deep cavern band now takes ossification. That makes sense. Alright, just gotta hope they don't have the slasher into bloodletter curve, because that might catch us off guard. It's gonna be a Liliana, also pretty good, although also vacation eventually nines her. So I don't think three blind mice is doing too much for me. Beza could be decent if we can cast it. So I'm not gonna scry, because I wouldn't be able to play also vacation if I do so. And then we get to surveil. Don't need authority. And then we can scry towards land four. Probably ditching Sunfall now. Drop it. Opponent's down to one card as well, and it's an Archfiend, that's a good one. So now what? I guess just Day of Judgment. And then get back ossification, which will deal with Liliana in time. Yeah, can't afford to scry again, so just need to get there. And it's a tap land. That's painful. So... Yeah, now... Liliana's threatening ultimate. Not necessarily game over, but not where you want to be. I have to keep the Day of Judgment. And then get lost. I guess I can get lost the bat and then ossification Liliana. And then there's just a demon left over. Yeah, I'll uh, take that. So just take my draw step. Could also transform treasure map after drawing get lost. Just to get uh, treasures and then I guess I would be able to day of judgment and even play also vacation afterwards. That's maybe a cleaner solution here. Although I do lose all my treasure. So planes not really need it once we flip treasure map. So yeah, I can still go about it in a few different ways. But let's just uh, start from scratch. And then... Probably fine to get lost Liliana instead of ossification. Although Get Lost is better in the face of more Deep Cavern Bands, since I can destroy those at instant speed. Better to keep Ossification for Slasher, which otherwise keeps coming back. Yeah, maybe I'll still go for Ossification here. Get Lost can also be an answer to the Annex, which would otherwise draw them a lot of cards. So I think that's probably reason enough to keep it. Foundry can eventually be a threat. Could also destroy it with a get lost, but hopefully we don't have to. And then I'm looking for another artifact here to draw some extra cards. I will probably take the hit from Foundry, keep get lost for something more impactful. So yeah, we survived the Liliana ultimate. Had we drawn our fourth land untapped, we might have been in a better spot, but glad to still be in the game. And there's Annex, so can destroy it before they get a chance to draw cards off of it. Opponent animates Foundry. So I guess we'll let them attack instead of them having the option of maybe exploring with a map. Alright. 
Now, of course, they can explore onto the Foundry next turn, so it's gonna speed up their clock. And we're not drawing too hot. Still probably have to play it in case they top deck another Liliana. Since it is an extra land that could come in handy. And uh, Bat's just gonna see an empty hand. They should still explore onto the Foundry, in my opinion, since that's a safer target. Slashers coming up. That's a problem, so yeah, there's a lot of problems we need to deal with. Day of Judgment, I guess, can wait a turn. So I'll be at 3 life. So if they had put the counter on Foundry, we might have been in range of dying. Now they're mana short of attacking with the Foundry. Sunfall would have been the much better sweeper here. Now we know what they're drawing, so I guess I could keep land in hand, but it's not going to change anyone's play. Alright, so needs a Beza top deck pretty much. Sunfall could do it. A land does not. Alright, GG's. So, yeah, draw a few too many lands in the end. That's where maybe making the play of keeping the treasure tokens to draw more cards can pull us ahead. But uh, yeah, I don't think it would have made a huge difference. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the play. Hands got potential. Treasure map to improve our draws and then Got a couple sweepers to slow the opponent down. And then eventually try and find a replication to combine with our blind mice. Opponent's blue-black. They get to surveil. So, yeah, against uh, blue-black, if it's kind of the mid-range demon deck, they'll have some card draw, they'll have some discard, maybe some counter spells. So they have some relevant cards for sure. Found the replication already. Not really interested in playing three blind mice. Would rather just cry with treasure map. And a duress. Yeah, that card's gonna be good against us at pretty much every point of the game. So their hope is to kind of punch a hole through our defenses and eventually maybe set up the combo kill with Bloodletter and Slasher. For now, I'm happy to just keep hitting my land drops. Sunfall is going to be a better answer to a slasher, but may need to deal of judgments just so we don't die. And it's going to be an annex for now. Alright, so no need to scry right now. Can play Fountain Port, which gives us another activated ability, but probably more interested in transforming Treasure Map as soon as possible. Opponent's going to draw two and discard to maybe hit their land drop for a turn. Discard's a cut down. And yeah, it looks like our opponent failed to draw lanes, so they're maybe a step behind now. A land I can still keep. And then I'm not opposed to just transforming treasure map and immediately casting the replication. while the coast is clear. So next turn we can already start replicating. For now it's just going to be a treasure token, but that's good enough for Treasure Cove to draw an extra card each turn. Opponent's got another Annex. So drawing two cards, but losing four life. Finding instant speed removal for a demon could be nice, but... Don't have too many of those. All sack to draw. Could surveil first, but uh, let's see what we can find. Maze my tome. So I can play that draw. And then I may as well surveil here. Otherwise, fountain port could also combine with a treasure, but wanna maybe keep one in play so we can keep replicating it. 
So now we're just looking for three blind mice. Our opponent will probably be able to make a demon token at the very least. But cards like Bloodletter are scary, since with double annex that's a lot of damage out of nowhere. But at least we've established our nice little engine here that blue-black is going to have a hard time answering. All right, Jace, so they're on the mill plan as well, maybe with the uh, author demon. Nothing too relevant gone. I guess uh, get lost could have been an answer to the annex. So do we want to switch gears here for some reason? I could make a fish token, start pressuring Jace, but yeah, if they have the um, Doomsday Demon, they get to mill me out no matter what. Unless I find removal for Jace, which is maybe the plan. So I'll just draw. Find a land. Opponent's got a discard to hand size. And then replicate Maze Mind Tomb. Do I want to scry? Sure. Scry with one, maybe draw with the other. Alright, there's ossification, so that deals with Jace at least. And then now we can keep replicating the ossification if needed. And uh, sure, we'll surveil once again. Another tome, probably not needed anymore. Although, maybe getting concerned about putting too many cards in Graveyard if they're just planning to mill me out with more Jaces. But yeah, finding three blind mice would be pretty good here. So I'll draw now. I'm leaving... my uh, Treasure Cove untapped. Alright, I guess we'll just pass. All right, the rest sees two cards that they already knew about. Maybe clearing a path for a demon here, but they can always just unlock the ritual chamber. Takes Day of Judgment. Opponent unlocks the chamber. And then sure, we'll draw with Cove. Probably just gonna copy ossification here, so we don't have to worry about their demon. And then I can probably afford to just draw with the tomes. Find another sweeper. And three blind mice at long last. Alright, let's see if we can still get there, or if our opponent is playing the demon that's gonna just mill us out before we assemble a critical mass. Yeah, not having any instant speed answers means that a bloodletter coming down still deals 8 damage to us right away. So yeah, two of those in a row could be lethal, although I guess we're about to gain some life off Maze Mind Tome as well. And there's another Jace, so they are on the mill plane. Thirty-two cards remain. So I can uh, still copy three blind mice with replication, and then the three blind mice copies ossification to make sure we deal with Jace. Find base on, that's good too. So we have two triggers here, three blind mice, and then ossification. Jace is gone. And the mouse army is starting to assemble. 
So opponent's at 8, so playing Besa doesn't gain me any life. Could play to draw, but uh, we've got enough card draw as is. So yeah, let's get in for one. Can uh, gain four here. And that's probably it for now. Can still activate fountain ports. Opponent's gonna start taking out the mouse tokens. Gotta start somewhere. And the rest, once again, can take a sweeper. Yeah, if they had an excruciator, I feel like they would have played it by now, especially with Cavern making it uncounterable. Opponent's gonna make a demon. That's fine. And we'll make a fish. And draw with Tomb, end of turn. Possible I should just start scrying instead of drawing. But if they have double Jace, then they get us no matter what. And we can probably beat them if they only have one Jace left. Alright, so we get four more copies here. And we want to copy three blind mice as much as possible. And then one ossification as well. So that can deal with the demon. And next turn we might be attacking for lethal already. As we'll also get to give the team plus one plus one. Opponent cuts down a token, could sack it to draw, but I'll just make two fish tokens instead. And sure, I'll run out Beza. Find another replication. Is that necessary? I guess why not? Instead of making a fish token here. And our opponent explodes, eventually falling to our army of mouse tokens. Alright, we're on the draw. Our hand seems fine. Only two lands, but we are playing a decent amount, so we're likely to draw more. And can scry a bunch to find them. And then lots of cheap interaction to help out in the aggro matchups. Turn one, advantage. Yeah, I might actually want to play authority and miss out on my two drop. Still a chance we can actually uh, draw an untap land next turn. But authority could save us a decent amount of damage. So it is a mouse aggro deck. Challenger enters tapped. Could also be more of an aura strategy. So authority may not stick around forever. Bottom three blind mice. Don't need it right now. Prefer finding a replication first. As well as additional interaction. All right, manifold mouse. We'll give Challenger a double strike, trigger Valiant. If they also have a pump spell or Shard Mage's Rescue for protection, that could hurt. Looks like a Monstrous Rage or a Shock just to trigger Prowess. Okay. In that case, alright, Day of Judgment coming up is good to know. Can scry first to see if we're gonna maybe draw an untapped land. Another tome I don't need. Alright, in that case, maybe ossification the challenger. Since I don't want to take too much more damage from it. And we're not guaranteed to wipe the board next turn. So a spear enters tapped, love to see it. And a plotted slick shot also loses a lot of effectiveness with authority in play. So yeah, this one drop is making a huge difference. And we can now Day of Judgment keep the board clear. And then I'll have Get Lost to answer slick shot by the time they can play it. 
Bivouac potentially problem, and Urabrask's Forge. This card is hilarious in the face of authority. Normally a great card to beat control strategies, but here it actually gains us life. So, not sure what they were planning. I guess eventually they're hoping to remove the authority. Which might happen if they're playing cards like Sheltered by Ghosts. But yeah, for now, we're in the driver's seat. Aha, uh -huh, get lost my enchantment, fair enough. So they have an answer, usually don't see get lost in those decks. So now the forge is actually a threat. And so is the slick shot potentially. So finding a backup authority is of utmost importance. If Slickshot just hits me for one, I'll take it. Can draw with Tome. And then I probably scry here. Got another Tome I can play anyways. Ossification answers Slickshot. Probably keep that. And then I can use Get Lost to answer the Bivouac if that attacks. But let me go to him draw first, and then I might draw into another Authority, which is more important. Could even Scry, but then I wouldn't be able to Ossification. So I think it's just to him draw. If we find Authority, play it and Scry. If not, Ossification the Slick Shot. All right, so I need to ossification to stem the bleeding a little bit. But yeah, now Orobrask Forge is a real threat. Opponent with a Boros Charm putting us to seven. So yeah, I'm gonna go to one if they activate Bivouac. So then I'll need to find another instant speed answer or once again, find the uh, authority. So this game has taken some very unexpected twists and turns. Day of Judgment doesn't do anything right now. And that's why Creature Lands and Forge are so good against control, because board wipes don't help. And then now I probably just take my draw step, and then I can draw with Tome after maybe scrying once again to try and find an answer. Sunfall doesn't do it. All right, last chance. Authority off the top. That's not it. I suppose another get lost also would have bought me a turn, but now we're just dead if they activate bivouac, that is. Swiss spear, yeah, that's lethal too now. Wow, that get lost definitely made the difference. Sadly doesn't blow up artifacts. Can destroy the horror token and still die to the Swiss spear now. GG's. Well, that game went from unlosable to ended up uh, dying anyways. On to the next one. Okay, we're on the draw. Hand seems fine. Opponents a life gain deck, and yeah, turn one Sanctifier. So finding a Sweeper is going to be of utmost importance. Get Lost can also destroy the Ley Line. I guess we can bottom land since we already have four. And look for Day of Judgment and Sunfall. SS Channeler is next. Yeah, maybe for now it is still also vacation the Channeler. Could see them play Sheltered by Ghosts, which can then remove the ossification, get Channeler back. What if I just destroy the Ley Line of Hope in response to a creature entering? Exiling Channeler also has the upside of potentially uh, making it harder for them to convoke a Knight Errant. And I think Channeler is still the bigger threat over Sanctifier, even though Sanctifier enables the Ley Line. So there's a lot to consider here. But at the very least, we'll have reset the plus one counter. And yep, 
Yep, there's a sheltered by ghosts. Get channel her back. But we're not too far off from destroying the sanctifier and getting ossification back. So we can surveil another ossification I'll keep on top. So with that information, it's maybe fine to get lost and then next turn ossification. So I'm looking to maybe destroy the ley line now. Right, mate. So I can respond now and get lost ley line. So we don't take quite as much damage. And then next turn I can ossification, pay the ward, and exile the channeler as well. So it doesn't matter if they put counters on it since it will get exiled. Photon keeps a ley line on top. So we're taking 9. Pride Mate grows to 4-4. Four, four. But now we should be able to clean up. And Bezos not a bad way to stabilize. Of course, finding a sweeper in the meantime would have been nice too. So we take six. Opponent's on empty. So Beza makes a treasure if I don't play my land yet. Sadly, no fish tokens to jump with. So we are dead to another top deck sheltered by ghosts. Gonna have to scry for an answer. And bottom. And then probably scry again. And then at the very least I can play another tome and three blind mice. Treasure map not quite what we need right now. Alright, ossification will do. Pride made down, and then not in a hurry to play three blind mice, even though it would generate more blockers. I guess the upside of playing it now is that I can start copying the mouse tokens, so I don't get in a position where I have to chump, and then don't have a token to copy in the first place. But we might miss the window on replication now. And the opponent's been a bit unlucky, drawing a few lines in a row. And there we have it. All right, we get to see our blind mice replication deck in action. Overall, maybe not the most competitive choice since it takes a long time to set up. A six mana enchantment that doesn't have an immediate impact when you play it is typically not competitively viable. But it is a lot of fun once you get it going, and especially in best of one, you don't usually see too much enchantment removal, so you can uh, potentially get things going. So yeah, a fun deck if you like control strategies, but I would not recommend it as a particularly competitive choice. So that's going to do it for today's gameplay. want to thank you for watching, hope you enjoyed, and as always, have a nice day.